Hi everybody, this is Cindy. And today I'm going to be sharing with you some tips on how to get students for your photography classes using Facebook ads. So let me know if you can see and hear me and um, post in the comments if you can see me. Let me know if you're watching on the live or the replay. I'm just going to double check and make sure it's live. Okay, great. Okay. And um, yeah, everybody say hello if you're on. It looks like some people are on. So if you don't mind, go ahead and um, say hello and tell me where you're watching from. And I'm going to add a few new people here in the group. Okay, so um, the reason I decided to have this little workshop is because I was, okay, thank you, someone says they can see me. Thank you, and can you hear me? Someone's from Baltimore, Maryland. Obviously, I think they can see me now. Okay, and hear me, okay. So um, the reason we're having this little workshop is because um, one of the photographers who's using my curriculum to teach photography classes is um, having some a little bit of trouble getting students using Facebook ads. So I love to troubleshoot anything that has to do with marketing and advertising. So um, I asked her to show me her, her ads and um, you know I asked how much she's charging and the landing pages and she was um, kind enough to show that to me and agree to let me create this video for others to see so that um, maybe some of you might be inspired by this or it might be helpful to you as well. So um, first of all, I want to know if anyone is teaching online classes that's watching now. Um, let me know in the comments if you are teaching or you're planning to teach in January or even in, in this month right now. Okay. So, and we have um, Barney's from Tucson. Hi, Barney. I'm just a couple hours away from you over in Phoenix. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I put together this little presentation and um, we're just gonna go ahead and get started. And for those that you who don't know me, my name is Cindy, I'm Creative Magazine Mama and Shutter Teachers. I help photographers um, get more clients through creative marketing templates and save time with blog posts, and then also um, curriculum that they can use to earn extra income by teaching photography classes. So um, today we're going to look at, with the ads, um, Amber's Facebook ad image, uh, her ad copy. We're going to talk a little bit about Facebook ad audiences and also Facebook ad placements. So are any of you using Facebook ads in your photography business or using them to get photography students? Um, post that in the comments. Let me see and let me know. And you can post and then I'll check the comments later on. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so the first thing I had asked Amber was how much is she charging for the class? So she's going to teach kids online and she said she started up the ad again. First, she had the ad running for $75 a student, um, whether that they are in person or joining online, they will get a set of memory cards and the three Kings cards. So she said she didn't want to go too low on the price. And for those of you who don't know um, what that is, let me um, show you real quick. So here are the these are the set of cards that are included with the curriculum. These are the um, Three Kings. It's a game, a Three Kings card. It has questions on it. And basically, you get the files with the curriculum, and then you can print these. These are printed at Moo. It's the Printfinity, where each um, card ha can have a different background. So we have the um, one background with the – this is hard to see on this. 
there we go with the um you know the brand of the class and then each card can have a different picture on the front so she's using that one and then i also have a set of cards that for like the heads um the heads up game where you put um these cards, like the different types of photographers, you can play memory game with it and just all kinds of fun things. So she's offering that with her class. And let me get back to this again. And so what I had recommended to her was that, um, back to here, that she could use the memory cards. I thought that was an excellent idea, but not necessarily to send them out to everybody, even if they're joining online, because then um, you have to, you know, you have to go through the trouble of printing them out and sending them in the mail and hoping it gets to them in time before your class. And that can be a little bit stressful, especially, you know, teaching online itself can be stressful if it's the first time you're doing it. So you want to keep your stress levels at a minimum. So what I recommended, if she wanted to use the cards that she could use them kind of as a sign up bonus and offer them like say to the first five people who sign up or maybe say um, if you sign up before a certain date, then you get these cards. Um, and then another thing I recommend is that I have a file where um, it's a PDF file where they can print their own cards. So that way, you know, that's something you can use to offer as an incentive. And that way you don't have to print the cards for them and that'll cut down on your costs. And you can just email them the PDF. They can print it out on their own computer and their moms can laminate it. Um, and so it's a great alternative to the printed Moo cards. Okay, so um, since online classes have lower overhead rather than in-person classes, you can charge a lower fee and still make a profit. So um, I think that was a good choice for Amber to lower her price a little bit for the online class. Um, just since she's just starting out and kind of getting, um, getting, you know, her feet wet with a Facebook ads. Um, and then here I talked about the cards that I just mentioned. Okay, but make sure to include the cost of your ads in your pricing. And this might be difficult to do at first because you don't know how much of your budget you're going to use for ads. And um, you don't know what the cost is. So I would say uh, maybe put put at least 10% um, of your budget. So like, let's say if you have 10 students um, paying $45 each, so that's $450, you wanna spend at least 10% of your budget. So at least 45 to $50 to get those students. And um, let me talk about the different types of, of audiences now. Um, let me check for questions. Okay. And someone said they've used Facebook ads. It's the same every time that they get crickets. Okay. Um, what kind of ads are you doing? Are you doing ads that are optimized for clicks or are you doing ads to get people's email address? Let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can help you. But um, basically this is why I'm doing this workshop because I know um, it can be frustrating when you do ads and you hear crickets and sometimes it takes a lot more money to invest up at, up at the front to get to know what works for your ads. And then once you find out what works, then you'll have a system and you can do it over and over again. So um, let's talk about the targeting for Amber's ads. She says she's targeting moms of kids ages 9 through 12. And she's also targeting homeschooling, but she said since everyone's doing homeschooling now, that the interest of homeschooling doesn't seem to narrow it down. And um, I'll talk about what you can do if you have a really broad audience. So let's talk about the audiences. First, you need to know that there are cold audiences and warm audiences. And cold audiences are going to be all the interests that you see on Facebook when you go to run an ad, it says, what interest do you want to target or what demographic do you want to target? You know, or, or um, male, female, the ages, um, you know, anybody who has not come in contact with your brand or your business is going to be called a cold audience. Your warm audiences are going to be your clients, those who visited your website, those people on your email list, 
um, your social media followers or those who have engaged with you on social media. So that's your warm audience. So that's kind of the broad, um, high level view of audiences. You want to start with cold and warm audiences. And what you need to know is that the cold audiences are going to be more expensive to target, whereas the warm audiences are going to be less expensive to target. They're going to be more affordable. That's why I always recommend when you start teaching your classes, start with your warm audiences. You know, make a post to your Facebook page and say, you know, who has kids that want to learn photography or send out an email to your clients um, or your email list and say, do you have kids that would love to learn photography? Because those are people who already know you. So they already, you know, know, like and trust you. They know you're an expert in your area and in photography. So they're going to be more likely to sign up than someone who doesn't know you. So the cold audiences are going to take more time to warm up to you. Now, how do you get cold audiences to warm up to you? You can get their email and let them get to know you through nurture sequences. And this is kind of what I recommend, especially when you're starting out, because if you're targeting cold audiences, like straight from your Facebook to someone who's never heard of you before and asking them to sign up their kids in photography, you might get some people, but it's going to be it's going to be kind of difficult because they don't know you and it's going to take a lot of touch points with them to get them to know you and feel comfortable paying them your money. Like, especially during this time right now, a lot of people might be careful um, with their finances. And especially if you're targeting moms, a lot of moms um, might be on a budget right now and things like that. So what you want to do is get their email address first and then start sending them emails and have them visit your website, let them get to know you, um, tell them how you started your photography business. And to do this, you can offer them either a lead magnet with tips. And I have a couple of those on my website in the templates for teaching area. And basically you just create a PDF, um, and say sign up for this um, tips guide on you know how to photograph your kids or tips for photography. Um, or you have a webinar similar to what I'm doing. You can say, hey, do your kids want to learn about photography? And you can just teach them like three quick tips or um, do a Q&A session or any kind of little small webinar. And it doesn't have to be a huge webinar. Basically, what you're doing through this is letting them get to know you and get to see you and get to interact with you. Um, and I recommend doing it like through a Facebook Live. You can get to interact with them um, in real time. Another thing you can use as a lead magnet to get someone's email list is give them access to part of your class. Maybe it's one of the modules or maybe it's a short part of a module, just a short little video. Say sign up and see the sample video. Um, Cause think about when you make purchases, a lot of times um, maybe people give you samples before you make a purchase. I know this is big in, in like the cosmetics industry, you know, you get a sample of um, makeup. Um, then also like if you go to Yogurtini places or, you know, frozen yogurt places, they let you sample before you buy. So this is one way to, um, offer something to someone in exchange for their email address. And then um, you can also have them sign up for a Facebook group. This might not necessarily be a lead magnet, um, but once you get them on your email list, you can say, hey, join my Facebook group. And I would create a specific group specifically for those interested in learning photography and then interact with them there. And then you can offer your class in there. So they'll be warmed up to you. Okay. So um, now we're going to talk about the cold targets. As she mentioned, homeschool is um, a really broad target and a really broad interest. Um, so if the audience interest is too broad, then you're going to want to narrow your audience by adding on another interest, such as photography. So when you go on to Facebook and you create your ad, it'll say interest. So you'll want to say, you know, homeschool and then it'll you can add another interest. 
So homeschool and photography. And then you could even do like homeschool and photography and another um, interest. Like maybe it's the location or maybe it's a um, store that your ideal um, student shops at. For example, if you're targeting the moms, um, what, you know, your ideal student that you want is going to be very similar um, to how you find your ideal photography client. You know, your specific student, there's, there's a specific student just for you, just like there is a specific photography client that resonates with you. So you really need to narrow that down and find out who that is. Um, another thing, another tip, I didn't include this in here, but you may also want to offer um, one or two free classes if you have friends who have kids who are interested in it. That way you have reviews um, to put up on your landing page. And I know um, I interviewed one of the photographers um, in my interview series, and she did this for her homeschool photography class. She found she wanted to reach the homeschool mom group. So she found some homeschool moms in offered their kids to take her photography class and then let them know that in exchange for the free class, you wanted to get a review and you can get referrals that way as well. And um, I wouldn't necessarily advertise this, just do this um, kind of behind the scenes. Otherwise you might have a bunch of people wanting to take your class for free. Okay, so any questions on that, just post in the comments and I'll double check to see if I see any other comments. Okay, and so let's look at the ad that Amber is using. And I tried to zoom in on it there. Um, so let's look at the image. She uses an image of a girl with a camera. Um, that's about the age range that she's targeting. And that is really great. I love that image. And I love that her face is covered because there's been a lot of research and images where the face is covered do better most of the time than images where you can see the face. That's why you might see a lot of images where they're cropped off at the nose. Um, like if, for example, if like with clothing ads and t-shirts, you might see the t-shirt on someone's body, but then their, their face is cropped off. That's why, because those kind of ads and images perform better than images where they show the entire face. And then again, when you're working um, using children's images, a lot of times the moms might not want their kids face to show. So it's a good way to, you know, feel safe and comfortable that um, you're showing an image of a child, but their face is covered for the most part. Um, and then it also does perform really well. So I think that's a great image for her ad. Um, and then the red is a good color choice. Red really like stands out in the newsfeed because um, red, your eye will be naturally drawn to it. Um, and then my recommendations on this is that you split test the image. I would personally um, try an image where you zoom in. You could even crop in close on that face in the ad, like crop in really close and maybe have one ad where you have the face cropped in close and then one with the wide angle of that image and then keep the copy the same and then see which image does best. Always remember when you're split testing um, the ads that you only change one element in the ad. That way you know what people are responding to. So I have a question from Kevin. What do you mean images with a face cover? Oh, the face. So Kevin, images where like on this image here, you don't see her eyes or her mouth. It's just, she's got the camera covered over her face. So her face is covered up. So um, in this particular one, because it is a photographer, you know, you can use the camera and cover the face and it makes sense. Um, it's just, I've, I've read statistics before where um, images where you can't see their entire face do better than those where you can see the entire face. And if you start looking around through ads, um, start noticing that you might see more ads, like it's with the static image, obviously. Um, let me know if that makes sense. Okay. 
And then let's look at the ad copy. So she's got a really um, long ad copy and it says wanted moms with kids ages eight through 12. I'm offering 10 spots to kids who want to learn how to properly use their camera and the photography industry. Give them the gift of learning with five spots in studio and five online. Hurry, they'll fill up fast. Click the learn more button below or, and then she has her link there for more information. If you have friends with kids that may be interested, feel free to let them know, located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So there's a lot of things, a lot of ways I would change up the copy. Um, instead of wanted moms with kids, ages eight through 12, I would do like wanted kids who want to learn photography. Um, even though you're not targeting the kids because you can't target kids on Facebook of that age, they won't let you. So the moms are going to see it. But me personally, that's what I would do. I would say wanted kids um, or does your child or is your child interested in photography or does your child want to know more about photography say you can say moms moms does your child want to know more about photography or you know start off with the benefit um instead of saying i'm offering 10 spots like instead of saying what you're offering start off with the benefit of what you're offering so um moms um do your kids want to learn photography moms let your kids have fun and learn photography at the same time through this class. Um, something like that. Or moms, give your kid the gift of learning. Give your child the gift of learning photography. I like that line, give them the gift of learning. I like that because it is around the holidays when I'm doing this workshop or when I'm doing the, yeah, this workshop, but she's going to do her workshop in January. So in December, people are thinking of gift giving. So I think that's a great line to use. Um, I don't think you need to say hurry. They'll fill it fast. Um, I don't think you need to say click the learn more button below because people automatically click on buttons. That's kind of self-explanatory. And, you know, on these ads, people are seeing them real fast. Like they just really skimming over it. So you want to put the most important pieces of information in your ads. You don't want to have um, have it be too wordy and have words that aren't going to take them to the next level. Because what do you want them to do here? You want them to click. So you want to write engaging copy enough to make them want to learn more about it. Um, so... Keep that in mind when you write your ad copy. Um, if you have friends with kids that may be interested, feel free to let them know. I don't think you need to say that. I think that's going to happen automatically. You might say um, tag your friends um, who may be interested because tagging is you know, common on Facebook. And that could help get your ad in front of more people. But most of the time, moms are really good about tagging their friends who they know will be interested in something like already they tag already. So I don't even think you need to do that. I think um, targeting moms is going to be um, really good as far as getting organic reach on your ads. Um, let's see what else I said. Um, OK. OK, so. Um, you don't need to put the location. I think she put that in there because um, she's located in Minnesota and she's teaching online um, to other areas. And that's my other recommendation. Even though you might have a hybrid class, and I think hybrid classes can work. I know my daughter took um, dance classes online and then they had the in-person class at the same time. But you don't want to create an ad with both of those in the ad copy because you're really going to get two different kinds of people, um, especially now in the pandemic. Um, you've got those who want to do everything online and those who go in person who aren't really nervous um, about getting um, the virus or things like that. So those two types of people because, you know, at least I don't know where everyone's watching from, but, but at least in the United States, it seems like you've got the people who are all for masks and those who really um, don't like to wear masks. And they're totally different people and they've got totally different interests and and everything. So 
Um, I think it's great that you can offer an online and in-person class, but I would make the ad copy separate because the people you're targeting are going to be different. Okay, so... Okay, and you don't need to include the number of spots in the ad. You could do an ad like following up. Um, this is a little bit more advanced, but if you wanted to target the people that visited your website or target the people that engaged with the original ad and say, hey, I've got five more spots left, you know, or when it's countdown, like when you've got three spots left or two spots or whatnot, um, you could do that. What I would say is you could include um, limited spaces available because I know um, for a fact that Amber is limiting her class to five people online and five in studio. Um, so you could maybe say, you know, limited, limited um, to five students in studio to maintain social distancing. See, that would be something you could say. And that would also encourage those who do want to take an in-person class but are a little bit concerned um, they would know that you are practicing the social distance rules there so you could do that as well and then if we have time i'm going to take a look at her landing page there okay so i have some other recommendations to split test the ad copy um, split test the ad copy you could have one ad that has long copy or longer copy and one ad that has shorter copy like the shorter copy might read um kids photography class um january 10th sign up here something like that you know just very short sweet and to the point um and or you could have a longer copy that would include everything in the class say in this class you will learn and then make a list of what you will learn and you can use the emojis like I like to use check mark emojis or you could use a bullet point emojis um, since it's for kids you could use something fun um, like smiley faces or the heart faces I like to use those um, and of course a camera since they are going to be learning photography Okay, and then I already mentioned you don't need to say share with friends. The only reason you would do that is if you're having a buddy class offer and you might want to think about that. That could be a good thing too. Like have like two people and have them get a little bit lower price because they're bringing a buddy. Um, that would help with your ad cost as well because you would only need to convert essentially one person because if they bring a friend, you've already, that'll pay for the um, second person. Okay, so the questions are, I'm not sure how to find those people on retargeting. Um, yeah, you like limited spaces. Yeah, so for retargeting, so that, that like I said, it's kind of advanced. And um, basically, you would do ads to your landing page. And for retargeting, you have to put quite a bit of money in it at the beginning because you will be building an audience of people who visited your page. And I believe you have to have at least 100 people. Maybe it's a thousand, I can't recall, but um, if you have 100, it's gonna be really low. So you wanna have a higher number. And if you think about it, each person that clicks from Facebook, like say, I mean, you wanna have your, cost per clicks really low. I know this is getting kind of advanced, but it's I'm not sure where what level you all are at. So that's why I thought I'd just mention it just in case. But basically everybody who visited your website, you can do another ad and retarget those people. So basically you're just doing an ad and the target will be those who visited your website. That's that's who the audience will be. And it's going to be a smaller audience and you don't have to pay as much for it. And it's going to be a warm audience too. Okay. So the next one is let's look at ad placement. So um, it looks like she may have um, her ad in all the different placements, such as stories, um, the right column, Facebook, Instagram. What I recommend is to do an ad set for Instagram and then do one ad set for Facebook. That way you can see 
you know, maybe Instagram does better for you or maybe Facebook does better for you. Um, and then I talk about retargeting. If you're going for the page views, then you can retarget. Um, it may be cheaper to do ads for people who signed up who are interested um, than to just target everybody directly. That's why I recommended to do like a lead magnet ad. Okay, so you want to do the ad separately in Facebook and Instagram. And then when you're starting out, you may want to drop off like the right column ad and um, some of the other placements and just stick with the news feed. That's what I recommend. If you're just starting out with the ad, stick with the news feed instead of the button that says all um, has Facebook, um, put them in all the different placements. Okay, and so I'm gonna see if there are any other questions posted there. And since I have a little bit more time left, I'm going to go to Amber's landing page and take a look at that. And then I will, okay, I'm going to stop share and then I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. Okay, I'm going to see if I can. Uh... Okay. So here is her landing page. And um, one thing right off I noticed, I, I do like the picture. I think it's really cute. Um, you may want to keep the photo consistent with the photo that's in your ad. So I would recommend to put the photo of the girl in the red dress here. You can always put this image down below. I think it's a really cute and fun image. Okay, so it says, let's learn something fun. Um, I don't know if everyone can see that, but the, the title is Let's Learn Something Fun. I like to be as specific as possible. So I would say, let's learn photography, you know, um, or let's have fun learning photography. Then it says, in studio or joining us online, your kids will have a great time from learning the history of photography to how to use your camera to hearing from photographers in many different genres. Learn photography with Amber Fitz is the first step in loving photography. Only 10 students per class, five in studio in Minneapolis, five joining online. All students receive the physical student aids. Online students receive PDFs to print out before each class. Students do not do not need a DSLR camera, but it is highly recommended. Okay, so I actually really like this text here in studio or joining us or joining us online. Your kids will have a great time. Like your kids will have a great time um, learning photography. This copy could go in your Facebook ad, and that's another trick to keep consistent. Keep your ad copy consistent, and then keep the copy on your landing page consistent. So you could do that as well. Okay, students do not need a DSLR camera, but it's highly recommended. Um, one thing I was going to say about the, the font, I like the font, it's a little bit light. Um, I might make it a little bit bolder just to stand out more. I like the bold here. So I might make all your text this darker color and then if you wanted to highlight these, I might make these like a um, an accent color. Okay, and then um, in small print, it says a DSLR camera would make a great Christmas gift. I think that's a great idea. And um, I would make that text a little bit bigger because it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to check your um, landing page on my phone too and make sure... If there's anything, always check your mobile because so many people are on mobile. So always optimize your pages for mobile first. Um, and then thinking of this, um, you say, let's see, it says DSLR camera would make a great Christmas gift. 
if you wanted to, not necessarily on this page, but um, I mean, I guess you could at the, if you had it at the bottom, you could link to um, Amazon or you could create um, an affiliate account with maybe b &H Photo and give them your recommendations because I know parents always want to know what kind of camera to get their child and they'll ask you and if you can email them out a link of an affiliate link you can make some extra money there as well and so I'm just checking your page on mobile it looks really good on mobile yeah it looks great on mobile I would just make I would make the text a little bit darker Okay, and then it has the dates here, um, Sunday, January 10 at 2 p.m. Central Time, each Sunday, same time, with the last class, Saturday, February 13th. I think that's great. Then you've got the name, email address, student's name and age, and then how do you prefer your student to attend class. Um, this is great. Okay, and then please contact me ASAP. I really, I'm ready to pay 45 per student to hold their spot. And then yes, and then no, not at this time. So yeah, I think this all looks really great. Um, but like I said, I would just change out the image here and then make this darker and make this text here a little bit larger font. Um, I like this too. I would probably, you could put the girl with the red dress up here and then put the dog image down here if you wanted or put the dog image down here um, or put it in between the text to break up the text a little bit. You could do that as well. So someone said, great idea with the link. Yes. And you can definitely like if you're doing um, a lead ad and getting emails, um, using Facebook ads to get emails, you know, think about this. Not everybody, not everybody is probably going to sign up for your class, um, but then you have a list of emails that you can market to, and you can market to them for affiliate um, products, just like this. Like because you know they're signed up because they're interested in photography, um, so you can send them a link of like your top five photography equipment recommendations or um, something like that. And then also um, the reason I recommend photographers to teach only within 50 mile radius using our curriculum actually, within 50 mile radius of their studio is because teaching classes is a great way to get clients. I know the in-person classes that we've taught, we've got bookings from them um, because people might be interested in your photography business and booking with you, but taking a class really gives them a chance to get to know you better and in, in like a non-threatening way, because maybe they think, hey, I, I might want to book a shoot with her someday, but um, maybe they don't want to, you know, they don't want to meet with you and be like sold to purchase a shoot, but maybe they take your class instead. So. There's a lot of fun things you can do with teaching photography classes, and it's a great way to earn extra income, especially right now and for the holiday season, and even just to supplement your business um, and bring an extra stream of revenue to your business. So that's all I have for now, and I'm open to any questions. If anybody has any questions, let me know. And I'll wait a moment and see and thank you to amber for letting us use her ad copy and her landing page as an example i appreciate that and i hope it was helpful to others i'm going to switch my screen back okay Okay, and Barney says, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you all being here. Okay. Um, someone says, I changed those things. Thank you. I'm assuming that's Amber because it just says Facebook user. So, okay, great. You're welcome. Okay. 
Okay, and Jill says, what affiliate link would you recommend? That's a great question. Um, I It depends on, like you could use Amazon. I don't really know how much you know profit the different places give. I would probably start with um, B&H Photo. And ironically, I checked them out for affiliates. And I think Arizona, the state I'm in, is the only state where they don't offer affiliates for some reason. But I would start with B&H Photo um, and then check with Amazon. You know, the different places offer different types of cameras. So maybe you have one for Amazon and one for B&H. Because I know a lot of people are familiar with Amazon. So, you know, they might be more inclined to um, sign up or to purchase something from Amazon. So that's a great question. Um, and Kevin says he just bought the Headshot Magazine layout. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, and okay, any other questions? Okay. I'll wait for just a minute. You're welcome, Jill. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Kevin says, nice work. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, and I'll wait just a few more seconds. Okay, so thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate your time and hopefully this has been helpful. And um, Kevin says the discount code, the discount coupon put me over to buy. I look forward to seeing what else you have to offer. Thank you. And actually, I'll just throw this into another thing that Amber, you might want to do in your ad, um, like I do in my ads. Like you know, you offer a coupon code, and maybe you don't include the price in the ad copy and just offer them a coupon code, and people will be more likely to buy it with a coupon code. They'll say, hey, I've got this code. Let me see how I can use it, especially moms. I know moms really like coupon codes because being a mom myself. So try that as well. Um, okay, Beckwith, Beckwith says, for the online teaching latest version, is that available if I've already purchased? Yes, the online teaching latest version is available. I have an upgrade for those. Um, if you want to just send me an email, let me know which one it is. If it's the moms, the kids, or the smartphone, or the basic one, because we have them all, all the online versions now updated. <laughs> oh no, someone was driving and watching. Be careful. Okay. And someone says, I love all your stuff. I have so much and I'm finally starting to utilize it all. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's Amber because that one doesn't show a name. And Jill says, always loved your ideas. Thank you, Jill. I'm glad it's helped. I'm glad you like them. And I try to keep um, coming up with new ideas for everybody. And it's it helps me when you guys give me feedback and send emails on what's going on in your business. And then I can um, kind of troubleshoot with that. So, So thank you all again. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.